the virtual uh, okay. for the process of the virtual conference. Uh, first of all, I will introduce the paper and then play the pre-recorded presentations. And during the presentations, if you have any questions about this paper, uh, please leave the questions in the chat. And after the presentation, I will uh, maybe read the questions and the, then the author will unmute himself and answer those questions. Okay, so I think let's start the first paper. Uh, let me share the screen and then Okay, so the first paper entitled B, uh, PBCCF, Accelerated Deduplication by Prefetching Backup Content Correlated uh, Fingerprint. So the presenter, Yao Bingqin, is a fifth year student, a peer student from the University of Minnesota. Uh, his research interests include the story system, machine learning, and backup deduplication systems. Okay, let's watch the video and please uh, leave the questions in the chat if you have, okay. Yao Bing, who is a PhD candidate of University of Minnesota. Today, I'm going to present my paper, Accelerated Deduplication by Prefetching Backup Content Correlate Fingerprints, PBCCF. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce the background of the data deduplication. The data deduplication has widely implemented in large-scale storage systems, in particular, in the backup system. The unique data is safe in the storage, while the duplicate data is only required to save its index. The backup administrator typically creates multiple policies based on the different backup types and different service levels. A single policy protects multiple clients, and the clients in a policy share the same backup frequency. Due to the different characteristics of the full and incremental, the incremental backup generally have much lower redundancy. Our paper only consists of the full backup. The duplicates of the backup string will be identified and eliminated. And the unique data segment are saved into the containers due to the detail. The container may be shared by several backups. The client policy system we focus on is shown in the slide. In this system, the detail is distributed to client side by prefetching effective fingerprints from the server side, which significantly reduce the network traffic and the latency issue. Also, the DDO, the DDO process has a good scalability because the computing resources required only provided by the clients themselves. For this system, it is hardly possible to adopt full indexing that prefetching all the fingerprints to memory for DDO. Due to limited memory, Parcel indexing is used to maintain a small portion of the fingerprint for DDoP. The research problem is how to efficiently determine the correlated fingerprints to be prefetched to the memory for maintaining the deduplication rate. For the existing client, the backup has similarity to the previous one in the same client, so we can just need to prefetch the latest backup to the memory. But there was no efficient approach to do the DDoP for the initial backup from the newly created clients. Because in the, uh, for the initial backup from, from the newly created clients, there is no historical backups for reference to do the DDO. In order to do the effective and efficient DDO for this case from the, the newly created clients, we observe the backup content correlation among the backups from different clients in the real backup system. We found that the DDoP rate could be significantly improved if prefetching a right backup from the other clients. For example, if prefetching the backup from the client 175 to DDoP, the initial backup from the client 371, the DDoP rate is only 3.2. However, the DDoP rate can be improved to the 47.9 if prefetching the backup from the client 404. In other words, the, du dupl the duplicates exist in different clients. The reasons are various. Container usage is one of the key match to design the PBCCF. The container usage data includes the container ID and the size of data, con the data content saved in the container for that backup, which is shown in the 2D plot. 
The data points in the plot shows high spatial locality in terms of the containers. As we can see, the data points are not randomly distributed, but divided into the seven, several groups. When we plot the container usage of the backups, we found the backup prefetch achieves the best video rate, has the most similar container usage. Hence, one of the key points we generalize from the real backup system, the backup similarity can be approximated by the container usage similarity. If we are using this approximation, the computing overhead will be greatly reduced by calculating the backup similarity using the container usage data instead of using the fingerprints. PBCCF are proposed to optimize the DDO rates of the initial backups from the newly created class by localize the most similar backup and determine the highly correlated fingerprints. Now, let me introduce the design of the PBCCF. In the server side, we may turn a fingerprint catalog to hold the fingerprints of all clients' the latest backup. The container usage data are generalized and input into the container usage pattern mining component, CUPN. The CUPN has a combination of the learning algorithms to discover their patterns and learn their features. This process is run offline that will not impact on the DDO process. Additionally, it requires very little overhead. Based on our testing, applying the CUPN on the 4.5 terabyte backup data only requires 3 minutes and 3 megabyte storage. In the server side, a small local window of the initial backup from the newly created client is indexed from the fingerprint catalog for approximately obtaining its container usage data. The similar CUPM approach to get its patterns. An effective approach is designed to measure the distance between the processing backup and the historical backup. The backups with the shortest distance will be considered as the candidate backups. In these algorithms, there are two parameters here. What was the size of the lookup window is good enough to approximate the container usage of the processing backup? And the second, we want to see the performance behavior it varies based on the different prefetching number. And now we define the PBCCF1. It will prefetch a single backup from the candidates to DDO for detesting the ability of the PBCCF localizing the best backup. And we focus on five policies and 55 clients' backup data collected from the real backup system. If the worst backup is prefetched for the DDO, the DDO rate is as low as 10.6, but if the best one is prefetched, the DDO rate can reach 30%. From the results, we can see the DDO rate of different prefetching numbers are increased at the beginning, then saturated at 5% lookup window. Hence, only 5% lookup window in our data set is sufficient for the CUPN to approximate the container usage of the process backup. The Prefection number was incremented to see the performance of the PBCCF to identify a good base backup. We can see the DDO rate has 4% improvement when increasing the prefection number from one backup to two backup. Then it is saturated at 26.2 when increasing the prefection number to default. The gap to the optimal deduplication rate is less than 4%, and then we can still claim that the PBCCF succeed in improving the DDO rate for the initial backup from the newly created client. However, not all the fingerprints of the candidates can contribute to the DDO process. To improve the effectiveness of the fingerprint prefetching, the number of each container shared by the candidate backups are counted as an example in the left figure. The fingerprints marked in red whose container has high number of the counts are prefetched to the memory for DDO. We evaluate of the performance on DDO by varying different memory size from 30 megabytes to 120 megabytes for prefetching, which is a show in the right figure. From the results, we can see the PBCCF has only 3.7% less DDO rate when using only 120 megabytes compared to prefetching all the fingerprints that requires terror by memory. There are two generic prefetching algorithms based on the sampling approach. 
for client policy deduplication system. Progress sampling is a attending version of the sparse indexing. And the progress sampler will be the related where we want to do the comparison. Now, let's do the comparison of the memory usage to maintain the DDO rate between different perfection approaches. After the optimization, we can see the PBCC F2 saves at least four times memory while maintaining the same DDO rate as the PBCC F1. And with that, considering the beta content correlation, the progress sampling requires at least 40, mem uh, 40 times memory to maintain the deduplication rate, as shown in the table. Conclusion, the CUPN approach only uses a lightweight machine learning algorithms, and the input of the CUPN is just the high-level metadata, and the additional overhead of the implementing the PBCCF is negligible compared to the full backup process. In our project, I got a lot of help from my manager, mentors, performance testing team, and veritas. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Okay, so thanks, Yobin's uh, presentations. Any questions here? Okay, so I think I do have two questions. One is like, uh, what is the execution time required for the uh, PBCCF to determine the highly uh, correlated fingerprints uh, for the new backup. Yobin, can you answer the question? Hey, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks for your question. Yes, as we can see from the design, the input of the learning model for the training and implementing is the, just the high level data, such as the container ID and the logical size instead of the fingerprints, which, uh, which significantly reduce the complexity of the model and the training and the implementing overhead. So based on our uh, experiment, uh, the just several seconds is required for the PBCCF to localize the best backup image from around 4.5 terabyte historical backups. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thanks. So there's another question is, uh, is necessary to run the offline container usage pattern mining approach frequently to update the patterns and the features of the historical, historical backups? Uh, okay, thanks for your question. The update of the model is to just to compute and learn the container usage pattern of the new process backup. So in the backup environment, the frequency of scheduling a full backup is typically low, uh, such as once uh, a week. So the backup content of a client in the certain time period is quite consistent based on our observation. So the update frequency is not necessary. It's maintaining it high. We could do it once a week or once a month. And again, this process is just run offline. So it will not have any impact on the backup process. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, thanks, Yabin. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the next one, the paper is entitled the EAD, a collision-free and high-performance ECC assisted, assisted deduplication scheme for flash storage. Uh, the presenters, uh, Jin Dongzhou is a currently a master student in software software's engineering from Xiamen University. His research interests include the flash storage system and the data duplications. Okay, so let me share the screen and watch his video. everyone, I'm Jin from Xiamen University, China. I'm going to present our work EAD, a collision-free and high-performance ECC-assisted deduplication scheme for flash storage. This is a collaborative study between Xiamen University and the University of Texas at Arlington. My presentation has five parts, introduction, background and motivation, main idea and design, performance evaluation, and conclusion. Data deduplication is widely deployed in secondary storage to reduce backup time and improve network bandwidth. And in primary storage system, inline data deduplication has become a commodity feature in flash-based storage products for many leading companies for the purpose of enhancing the system performance, reliability, and the space efficiency. Generally speaking, the deduplication process can be divided into four stages. 
Bros. Data chunking let divide this data into roughly equal sized chunks. Second, harsh computing for chunk fingerprint let uniquely identify data chunks. Third, index query let determines whether income chunks are duplicated to be removed using fingerprints. And fourth, index and uh, metadata updating. Although inline deduplication is a popular technique to reduce the write traffic and improve the space efficiency for flash-based storage, it has some shortages as well. In this paper, we aim at addressing the computing overhead, background, and motivation. There are two main challenges on harsh computing. We compare the 4KB latencies of reading and writing from Intel Optin 3D Exploit and the Samsung Xenon Flash devices, and the latencies of various harsh functions on a 4KB data page. This finger shows that the cryptographic harsh computing latency is actually higher than or comparable to the write latency of the modern flash devices, which indicates that the harsh computing process can potentially offset the benefit of the write traffic reduction brought by the data deduplication to some extent. Secondly, all harsh functions have potential collisions in which two different data chunks share the same harsh value. Although the collision depends on the specific harsh function. It is also dangerous. The deduplication-based storage system may be attacked. We assess the extent of harsh collisions of BCH-based ECC and uh, examine the data redundancy based on the harsh functions of Sherwin and uh, BCH-based ECC and compare the deduplication ratios. In a word, while ECC may not be directly used as a harsh function for deduplication system, it can be used for the detection of the data similarity. So, can we use ECC in deduplication-based flash storage systems. Main ideas and design. PAD locates and works with the flash translation layer in flash-based devices. The finger shows an overview of the system architecture of PAD, different from the traditional deduplication workflow. There are no harsh computing procedures conducted on the full data chunks. EAD consists of two main functional modules, ECC-based redundancy detection and multiplication energy. ECC-based redundancy detection is responsible for detecting possible redundant data chunks. Multiplication energy is responsible for varying whether a data chunks with a matched black two fingerprint is redundant or unique. EAD relies on four data structures to identify data similarity and eliminate the redundant data chunks, namely ECC-based spoon splitter, flat 2 index table, primary mapping table, and the secondary mapping table. The ECC-based spoon splitter is constructed and stored in main memory to check whether the black 2 value exists in the black 2 index table. Black 2 index table is an in-memory hard structure to store the fingerprints of ECC codes in PAD. Besides the above two data structures to detect, EAD uses a two-level indirect mapping mechanism consists of primary mapping table and a secondary mapping table. By using a two-level indirect mapping mechanism, 
the reverse update issue during sub session is simplified to only update the corresponding entry in SMT. The main objective of the duplication energy is to confirm and eliminate the redundant date class, since the different date class have the same ECC value. This figure shows an illustration of the process of handling a write request in EAD. After ECC-based redundancy detection, EAD fetched the previous stored data chunks and its ECC value from the flash and perform a byte-to-byte -byte comparison between this ECC and the data chunks in memory. Performance evaluation. We implement EAD in SSDC and the configuration of SSDC is summarized in the right table. To compare the performance of EAD with that of the Shovan based approach, 16 byte flex two approach and a 4 byte sampling based duplication method proceeds on in CFL. EAD outperforms the Shovan based, sampling based, and the black two based the duplication approaches by an average of 1.192 times, 1.186 times, and 1.42 times. While the Shovan based schemes apply harsh computing on all data blocks, no matter they are redundant or unique. And the sampling scheme has low accuracy and still need heavy harsh computing. To eliminate this impact of EAD, we evaluate the, and analyze the response time distribution for the four different duplication approaches on SSDC. As is shown in the graph, EAD has a direct impact on the tail letters. The duplication ratios and memory over. The result shows in indicate that EAD consumes less memory space than the traditional Shovan, Black 2, and the sampling based deduplication approach. Because directly using the PCX code as fingerprint consumes significantly more memory than the traditional deduplication approach, EAD addresses the challenge by using the Black 2 of the PCX code. Sampling based schemes lost much more redundancy due to the low accuracy. Conclusion The problem is the performance bottleneck of the duplication based flash storage system is stripped from the I.O. state to the computing state. To address the problem, we propose EAD that exploits the ECC property and the Asymmetric rewrite performance characteristic of flash storage to identify similar data blocks and uh, provide byte to byte comparison to eliminate redundant data blocks. Our experimental results show significant performance improvement and less memory computing overhead. That's all, and thank you. Please send us email if you have any questions. Okay, so any questions? Okay, so uh, Jin Dong, I think I have one or two questions. Uh, one question for your work is, is there any specific reason uh, you use the flash memory rather, rather than some other uh, storage devices like HDD or tapes? Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, it's a good question. But uh, we use ECC to improve the uh, read performance of SSD because um, the read performance of SSD is very fast. And the read latency of SSD is slow. Uh, and the harsh computing may be uh, so the harsh uh, the harsh latency of the uh, of the the harsh uh, of the duplication system may be too long for the 
<coughs> the harsh latency of the duplication system may be too long. So we use the uh, EAD to improve the performance of SSD, not HDDS. Uh, and uh, uh, EAD can be used in this environment if they have ECC. So we are working to apply EAD in this environment to investigate EAD's performance. Uh, we, we may answer this question in our future studies. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks. Uh, the other question is like, uh, when you talk about the tail latency, uh, do you consider the garbage collection or wear leveling reallocations in your uh, simulation results? Uh, oh, so, sorry, pardon, can, can you speak? So, so I mean, do you consider the garbage collection or wear leveling reallocations uh, in your simulation result for the tail latency? Uh, no, sorry. Uh, our our environment environment setting the uh, SSD is uh, the space of SSD is enough, and uh, we do not consider the garbage collection of the of this environment. Okay. Okay. So basically, you assume the the solid state drive has the adequate uh, space for the incoming workload, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's go to the third paper. Uh, the third paper entitled the Cosma and efficient concurrency oriented space management scheme for in-memory file systems. So the presenter Zi Pei Feng is a master student from Chongqing University under the supervision of the Dr. Chun Hua Xiao. His research interests include the operating system and the file systems. Okay, let's watch the video. Hi, here's our work, COSMA, an efficient concurrency oriented space management scheme for in-memory file systems. Emerging byte addressable non-volatile memory, such as PCM and Intel 3DX point, has the advantages of fast, cheap, and persistent, and is considered as the next generation of persistent memory. However, it has limited write times. There are many file systems designed for NVM, such as PMFS, Nova, but they have some problems. Firstly, their performance scalability is not good. According to our experiment, there is up to five times performance degradation in high concurrent environment, which is caused by the centralized space allocator design. Secondly, they can't adapt to multi-NVM systems and achieves wear leveling and load balance among NVMs. To solve this problem, we propose a hierarchical space management scheme named as COSMA. It divides the space of the file system into the private allocation area and the public allocation area, and allocates a private allocation area for each thread. As a result, most requests can be finished at thread local level to achieve better concurrent processing performance. For example, in the right figure, it is only necessary for thread two to request for more space from the public allocation area when its private allocation area is insufficient. For other threads, all requests can be completed at local level. Besides, it selectively choose NVM for space allocation and reclamation to achieve where leveling and load balance among NVM. To efficiently reclaim space, we adapt a lazy reclamation strategy. We only passively reclaim space from threads when the public allocation area is insufficient. For systems with different NVM capacity, we provide three different strategies to achieve better performance and space utilization. RPFSC applies to systems with insufficient NVM capacity. It reclaims space from threads that occupy most resources as much as possible, thus reducing reclamation frequency. TLIU is suitable for systems with sufficient NVM capacity. It can achieve good performance, as reclamation rarely occurs and its maintenance cost is negligible. DMDL LIU applies to common situations. It has constant time complexity for both allocation and reclamation, which can achieve stable performance in most cases. 
To verify COSMA, we conduct some experiments. We implemented COSMA on PMFS. It can also be extended to other file systems. These three figures show the comparison of screenshot write throughput between COSMA and PMFS in 4, 8, 16 threads respectively. We can see that COSMA can improve the screenshot write performance up to 1300 megabytes per second and the improvement ratio reaches 7.6%. As shown in the left figure, we use 5Bench to test COSMA in application scenarios. We can see that COSMA has the most obvious improvement in the workload of file server, reaching a 15% improvement percentage. As shown in the middle figure, we repeat the experiment in motivation. COSMA can reduce task complete time by 33%. As shown in the right figure, we write to file system and compare the right amount of NVM. COSMA can achieve better wear leveling than PMFS. In conclusion, existing NVM file systems have obvious performance degradation as much as 500% in a highly concurrent environment. To solve this problem, we propose COSMA. It changes the flat space management scheme into a hierarchical one to achieve good performance scalability. It can adapt to systems with different NVM capacities and realize load balance and wear leveling among NVMs. We implement COSMA in PMFS. The experimental results shows that COSMA can improve the IOPS by 15% the write throughput by 7.6%, and the concurrent processing performance by 50%. OK, so is Zipay here? It seems like Zipay Uh, to, uh Zipay have our sense, so... so... We're going to review several commonly used Linux file systems. OK, so Zipay is not here, but you will answer the question on... Yeah, yes, yes. Okay, so basically there's uh, one question is what's the difference between the Cosma and the TC malloc? Uh, okay, uh, thank you uh, for the question. Uh, Cosma learning TC uh, idea of improving um, concurrency. Uh, the difference is that TC malloc is uh, mostly used by uh, application and user space for fast allocation and uh, reclamation. For uh, our small objects, such as uh, seven bytes objects, it improves performance by reducing the RSN's, uh, the overhead caused by frequent system calls. Uh, it pre allocation extra space as cache uh, for small size space allocation. Cosma is used in FAM system for fixed uh, size space. Uh, allocation and uh, reclamation. It's a uh, margin is uh, managed uh, or space or FAM system. Uh, they are they are used in different environments. Okay, that's my answer. Uh, okay, so one. another question is maybe I don't know whether you know the answer or not. So basically, I see you use the LRU based time step. So do you implement some other uh, schemes like the LFU or others? In your like the memory file system, uh, RSS. Uh, you um, use the RRU for the mm -hmm. time step. I see. I when I watch the the video. So do you implement some others like uh uh LFU? The least the frequency uh. LFU. Yeah. yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, sorry, uh, because uh, as paper um the man the manager uh work is a. Uh, uh, do my uh, phone to pay so uh, so maybe I can't answer the question okay okay sure it's fine okay so yes. th thanks for the answers okay uh, let's go to the next paper uh, entitled ASTEC adaptive error tolerant uh, erasure coding scheme based in solid state drive uh, the author is Tian Qi Zhan a PhD student from Huazhong University of Science and Technologies uh, let's watch the video Hello everyone, I'm a PhD student from Huazhong University of Science and Technology. 
This is my great honor to present our work named AETEC Adaptive Error Tolerant Reverse Encoding Scheme with from small mobile devices to large scale storage servers. Flash memory based SSDs have become a mainstream storage device thanks to flash memories with small size, energy efficiency, low latency, and massive parallelism. The popularity of SSDs is fueled by the continuing drop in cost per GB, which in turn is achieved by storing multiple bits in a memory cell and the vertically stacking memory layers. Unfortunately, capacity growth is accompanied with there exist multi-level reliability problems of flash memory, which include bit errors, page level errors, byte blocks, and byte chips. And there exists in imbalance of bit errors between weird blocks. Raw bit error rate RBR of the net flash memory increases with the increase of program program and the erase circle. However, existing inter-SID reliability techniques do not consider both the multi-level reliability problem of flash memory and the imbalance of wheel between blocks. ECC can only correct bit errors within a flash page, and read can tolerate the multi-level errors, but the number of read tolerance errors is limited such as root 5 and root 6 only tolerate 1 and 2 errors, respectively. For low wheel blocks which the error rate is low, the redundancy provided by read is excessive. And at the end of SSD's life, read cannot tolerate multiple errors in one sit. So, there are three key questions as how to ensure multi-level reliability of flash memory. How to ensure the reliability with the best fault tolerance according to the different bit error rates between flash blocks of different wheels, and how to reduce the impact of reliability techniques on SIDs. The contributions of ATEC is ATEC applies RS inertial codes to provide adaptive fault tolerance with the flash blocks of different error rates, and ATEC use use FPGA-based multi-read RS code encoder and decoder to improve. The key idea of ATEC is that ATEC adaptive applies RS inertial codes with corresponding error correction capabilities according to the number of high wheel blocks. To solve the multi-level reliability problem, ATEC adapt various RS inertial codes to ensure different reliability. To cover the imbalance of bit errors between physical blocks, ATEC configures RS codes with corresponding fault tolerance according to the number of high wheel blocks in the superblock. To reduce the impact of reliability enhancement technique on SID's performance. ATEC adapt FPGA-based multi-read RS code encoder and decoder to read. This is the A architecture of ATEC. ATEC adopts a strap organization method based on physical address and it regards a super page as a strap. AETEC select four type RS codes to ensure different reliability with different redundancy radius. When there is no high wheel block in the super block, AETEC adopts RS15-1. When the wheel of block increases, AETEC will adapt the RS reversal code to avoid data loss according to the number of high wheel blocks. For the high wheel chip, the wheel tolerance of inertia code is set to the maximum to tolerate chip failure. We utilize Cyanx HLS development tools 
็ได้ยิน plus as j base encoder and decoder to reduce latency and this is the architecture of our encoder and decoder and this is the resource overhead of our encoder and decoder and this table is the latency of our of the processing of encoding and the to further reduce latency synthesis we also propose double linked list red cache the red cache data includes user data verification data and recovery data at first ATC wraps data from the data buffer area to the data parity buffer area then ATC used the IC encoder to generate the check page. At last, ATC writes the data page and the check page to the flash in a super page gradually granular. To evaluate ATC, we simulated the SSD with a capacity of 64 GB and 20% 20 reserve space with SID theme capacity. The parameters of a net flash chip used in the test are for micro MLC chip. We evaluate based on this image list UPER, average response time, average color time, and the initial flash time. And we use this table, the workload, to evaluate. We test the UEPR of rate 0, rate 4, R, and ATEC. When the PE cycle is greater than 3,500, the UPER of ATC is two orders of magnitude lower than that of a Mars, a state of art via a weird read scheme. It is because ATC can tolerate multiple chip errors. However, Mars can only tolerate a single error. We also evaluated the average response time. When the PE cycle is 2000, 3500 and 5000, the average response time of ATC is 32.8%, 27.1% and 9.1% lower than rate 4, and the average response time is 1.1% lower. 1.8% higher and 4.2% higher than Mars. Although AECC sacrificed some performance that compared with Mars, it provides a high reliability to tolerate multiple chip errors. When the PE cycle is 2000, 3500, and 5000, AECC reduces the risk time for 38.8%, 25.9%, and 2.4% compared with read 4. For chip error, the offline recovery time of read 4 and ETC is 19.12 seconds and 19.78 seconds, respectively. For dead error, the offline recovery time of read 4 and ETC is 18.84 seconds and 17.16 seconds. When a die error occurs, ATC makes full use of SSD parallelism, so the recovery time is less than rate 4. More in the paper, reliability modeling and analysis of ATC and the double link list this red cache to reduce the latency and the implement details. Okay, so hello, Tianqi. <coughs> Are you there? Uh, hello. Okay, so I think we still haven't any questions from the audience. Okay, so I, I do have one question. Um, how do you uh, decide? Uh, so, or, or the question is, how do you decide the, the EC mode change? when increasing the P cycles of solid state drives? Uh, I mean, with the, so basically you use a different uh, resilient codes, right? 
And but when do you change uh, change the mode of the uh, risk elements uh, when increasing the P cycles? For example, do you set some threshold for the the mode change? Uh, the question is means is, is how I adjust the uh, the RS modes to uh, to according to the layer of the blocks. Yep. Uh, Okay, uh, for, for when there's no high wear blocks in the super block, ATEC adopts RS51, which is enough to ensure the reliability required by the super blocks. Uh, when the wear of block increases, um, some blocks gradually age into a high wear state, and uh, ATEC will adjust the value of the data block and the check block in RS user code to avoid the data loss according to the number of heavier blocks. Uh, for example, uh, for MLC flash chips, when the use code uh, P cycles is larger than 5,000, uh, it means uh, most uh, super blocks exist uh, with the multi, multiple heavier blocks and there's a high probability of die or chip fa failure. So ATEC sets the uh, usual codes RS-12-4 in the circle block with the high, highest fault tolerance to tolerate, to tolerance the error. Okay, okay, got it. So basically you based on some specific threshold uh, to change the resilient codes based on the yes. P cycle, right? Yes. Okay, okay, thanks. Uh, let's go to the last uh, presentation. So the paper entitled uh, An Empirical Study of the Hybrid Solid State Drive with Optin and QLC Flash. Uh, the author is Hui Chen uh, from the Software Hardware Core Design Engineering Research Center, Center uh, East China Normal University. Uh, their paper focused on the uh, experimental uh, empirical studies of an emerging hybrid solid state drive. Okay, let's watch the video. My name is Chen Hui. I come from Eastern China Normal University. I'm so happy to share our research. An empirical study of hybrid SSD with Optin and QLC flash. This figure shows the architecture of Optin H10. It contains two storage media, Optin memory and QLC 3G NAND with their own masters. Combined with Intel Rapid Storage software, data will be intelligent cached in optimal memory. In order to explain the performance gains after acceleration, we define three working modes of Optin H10. They are unaccelerated mode, accelerated mode, and pin mode. In the pin mode, the test file will be fixed to optimal memory. Our contributions are as follows. First, we evaluated the basic performance, and then we studied the impact to other factors, including queue depth and the size of working sets. Finally, we explained the impact of data migration between devices on performance. Table 1 shows the average response latency under single thread and single queue depth. We can see that the performance difference is manifested in random rate. Figure 1 shows the batteries for the four workloads in different load pressure. In acceleration mode, we can see Optin H10 achieves the best performance when the number of Q depths and threads is 8 or 16. In addition, as the load pressure increases, when the device performance tends to be saturated, the bandwidth show a downward. Conclusion is that QLC 3D9 performs poorly on random rate. Through optimal memory acceleration, access latency has been improved. When the load pressure is high, QLC 3D9 may play a role in shouting. Figure 2 shows performance at different Q depths. We can see that use optimal memory to accelerate, more friendly to read requests.
found from red and white as the cure depth increases, the average response time increases linearly, and the performance is better if optimal memory is not enabled. The conclusion is that enabling optimal acceleration is better at low cure depth. It suggests not to accumulate a large number of write requests with optimal acceleration enabled. Finger 3 shows the bandwidth for the size of working set. It's worth noting that, due to the limitation of optimal memory capacity, the size of working set is less than 2 GB in pin mode. From the figure, we can see that, with optimal acceleration, the overall performance is stable. Compared with OLEQL C3D NAND, the main performance improvement is small file. Therefore, we come to the following conclusion. Small files are suggested to be fixed to option, while large files can be accelerated using qlc 3 d and internal parallelism. Finally, we use the function of locking files in pin mode to simulate data migration. In order to continuously observe the impact of data migration, we choose to lock the 2 GB file for optimal memory. During this period, we read the 100 MB test file from the host system. From the figure, we can see that migration has a large impact on performance. Frequent data migration should be avoided as much as possible. The above is our performance evaluation for Optin H10. In order to better utilize its performance advantages, we propose the following suggestions. Better acceleration for read-based workloads. Avoid accumulating a large number of write requests. Accelerate small file accesses in priority. And avoid frequent data migration. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so... Hui Chen, are you there? Oh, oh yeah. Hello, so, can you hello. hear me? Yeah. Yes, I mm. can hear you. So actually there's two questions. One is, uh, can you provide a little bit more details about three working modes of the Optin H10 uh, in the test? Uh, okay, uh, Optin H10 uh, combines two breakthrough technologies, uh, the low latency Intel Optin technology and uh, the high density uh, Intel QLC 3D NAND. Uh, we can decide whether to enable uh, Optin memory acceleration through the software Intel Optin memory and the storage uh, man management. Uh, when acceleration is not enabled, only QLC 3D NAND media can work, which is equivalent to QLC SSD with the same uh, capacity. Uh, Optin memory acceleration is enabled. Uh, both storage uh, technologies work at the same time. Uh, by combining uh, by combine, uh, Intel rapid storage technology, data will be intelligently cached in Optin memory media. In addition, for Optin H10 with 32 uh, gigabytes Optin memory uh, media, in the acceleration mode, it provides richer functions. Users can uh, directly pin files on applications that they want to accelerate to optimal memory. In order to study whether enabling optimal memory can bring acceleration effects, we define the above three situations as the three usage uh, modes of Optin H10. Okay, that's my answer. Okay, good. So the, the, the last question is like, uh, based on your presentation, it seems like the, for the data migration scheme, uh, you use the it's based on the simulation rather than the implementing the scheme in the real devices. So can you give a little bit more uh, details on that? Uh, yeah, we use the um, R meter to generate uh, uh, different workloads. Now, um, before uh, Optin H10 is a company's product, we can uh, uh, get more information about its Intel architecture. So we use Optin H10 as a black box to test and uh, verify the 
uh, effectiveness of using optimal memory acceleration by uh, decide whether to enable optimal memory acceleration. Uh, and uh, due to driver limitations, Optin H10 can only be used uh, under Windows. So we install the Windows system on QLC3 D9 uh, media for testing. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh, really good. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for today, uh, this section. And thanks for all the presenters and also the audience. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks. Uh, have a good day. Bye.